Hi guys, so today I'm going to speak about Waterloo guitars. Why Waterloo guitars? Because it's probably for me the most important guitar brand for my personal musical journey. I discovered Waterloo because back in 2012, I guess, I bought um, Collings MTO mandolin and Collings are the, the brand behind Waterloo, in fact. It's made by the same man in Austin, Texas. So back in 2014, 2015, Bill Collings, the boss of Collings Guitars, which unfortunately passed away some years ago, Bill decided to recreate guitars from the Depression era. So guitars from, from 19, the 1930s, um, which were guitars what we all have in mind, for example, the, the Martin, or Maogani Martin, or the Kalamazoo's. So typically, this is kind of reproduction of this, this instrument, instrument which were played by musicians who played blues, folk, country, played on porch, street, church, honky tonks, really the instrument of um, every people. You know, uh, not everyone at the time uh, could afford an I.N. Martin, for example, or I.N. National. So in most of the guitar brand at the time, they decided to create some cheaper instrument. But cheaper doesn't mean that they, these instruments sounded worst. In fact, they, had, they have a different voice which inspired a lot, a lot, a lot of musicians. So, with Waterloo, Collins decided to reprodu reproduce sorry, this instrument, but when you know the craftsmanship of the guys at Collins, you know that the Waterloo instrument are going to be some really, really great instrument. So, I'm going to have a quite... Um, we're going to deep dive into all the Waterloo models and after that I'm of course gonna play mine. So let's start with different models. They started with their flagship model which is the WL14. In fact it's typically a reproduction of Kalamazoo L00. So the, the WL14 is a spruce, have a spruce top on the mahogany back and sides and you can have it both in X bracing or ladder bracing, with or without truss wood. So it's a really, really responsive instrument, really known for blues uh, playing. But I have to admit that I'm always kind of skeptical when I hear people saying that a typical instrument is made for a typical style. Um, the limit of a person are not your limits. So if you think that you can play other styles on any guitars, do it. So that's I say that because for me, the WL14 has I've always been sorry, kind of fantastic jazzy country, whatever you want. Some it can play everything. You have a lot of precision in in the intonation and in string separation that allow you allows you to play some jazz licks really easily. So here it is for the WL14. You have um, another model of WL14 which is the boot burst and as we say which is quite funny it's inspired by the old um, color of leather pair of boots, cowboy boots. So you have that beautiful sunburst and after that you have Two others, WL14, the MH, MH for mahogany, it's a full mahogany guitar, so typically the same as the WL14, but just the combination of wood change. And you have the sister tail, the sister tail is named after a bird from Texas, and it's inspired by the Kalamazoo Oriole, so it's spruce with maple, I've never tried one, unfortunately, but I have a guitar which um, reproduces that um, um, specification and you have the big quick response that Maple offers you. So this is for the small 14 frets model of the Waterloo um, lineup. And after that, in the 14 fret, you have the WLJK for Jumbo King. It's 
inspired by regular guitars and it's spruce for the top and you can choose between mahogany and rosewood for back and sides. And you have, after that, the WL JK Deluxe, which is the same guitar, but with more bindings and these beautiful valve cover tuners, which are really, really, a really cool feature. So, this is for the 14 frets guitars made by Wasserloo, but you also have a big choice of 12 fret guitars with the WL12, 12, sorry, which is ba basically the same as the WL14, but in a 12 fret version. So it's spruce and, uh, and maple, it's different, I'm sorry. Spruce and maple for, for, um, for the back. You have the WL12 AMH, full mahogany, and the WLK, which is um, inspired by Kel Croydon guitars. It's built, it's probably the lightly built guitars of the Waterloo line. Um, you can only put some um, 11 to 52 gauge. This is the maximum you can uh, put on this guitar, you know, because uh, perhaps um, a too big gauge will destroy the guitar. It's, it have with, with, um, um, a lot of, um, of responsive. It's a really responsive instrument. So this is uh, for this one, Spruce Mahogany. And you can also have this beautiful, some people do not like that, but I think they the fan of um, Lucky look that I am <laughs> to really love that. You can have that optional southwest unpainted scene that I think is really cool. You have after that the WLS, which is my the last babe I I bought. It's um inspired by Stella guitars, it's laid braced, so it's truly a different animal, but I can't describe oh Oh, I love this instrument. This is a stellar instrument. So loud brace, it's spruce for the top and cherry from the back for the back. And as I say, it's a stellar guitar for me. And you can have the same with the Deluxe, um, the WS Deluxe, Deluxe. So it's same with bindings, wood purflings and custom acrylic inlays. And to finish the lineup of Waterloo guitars, you have the WL. 80, which is the arch top made by the brand. It's, I guess, inspired by um, a guitar Bill Collins um, own, uh, which was an old recording king uh, arch top. So they recreated it. So it's, um, I think it's built both in spruce for the top and mahogany or maple for the back. Um, here it is for the lineup. Okay guys, just a few seconds to let you know that if you enjoyed what I'm playing on my YouTube channel, perhaps you will be interested in my book called 20 Pieces for Solo Acoustic Guitar. It's out on Amazon everywhere in the world. I will put a link in the description. So now let's go back to the video. So now let's talk about the sound. Of course, describing the guitars is a thing, but listening to them is more important. I'm gonna play my, my two Waterloo just after, but you have to check on um, YouTube, for example, players like, of course, Julian Lage, which is probably one of the most important guitarists for the Waterloo history. Back in 2015, I guess, he have made an, um, an interview for Acoustic Guitar Magazine, perhaps. Uh, in which he's playing his WL14 laid braced and it sounds absolutely stellar. And Julian Lange, of course, Doug MacLeod, fantastic blues player, Adam Levi, we, which ha we have, sorry, uh, so beautiful touch. The probably one of the most important for me, Bill Fritzel, you can see him on a fretboard journal interview and fretboard journal session playing um, Waterloo. Uh, Molly Tuttle, the fantastic slide player Joel Andret, and the other fantastic slide player Ariel Posen. Uh, Bob Minor, the bluegrass killer, of course, and perhaps a bit 
less known is a guy called Anthony D'Acosta. I discovered his work um, playing with Adam Levy, Levi, Adam Levi, sorry, on a session, uh, I think it was at the Music Emporium. Um, Adam is playing a Collins baritone and Anthony is playing a Waterloo WL12. And it sounds absolutely stellar, really. Uh, these guys are not into demonstration. They are into music. It really sounds I have watched this video tons of time, to say the truth. So you have to check out Anthony da Costa. And another guy that you probably don't know, which is Mark Altens. In fact, he is working at Collings. Um, and um, he has demos on his uh, YouTube channel of uh, Waterloo's and Collings. And for me, which is probably some of the best sounding uh, Demos is a gifted player, which is really a cool thing. And a last thing to say, which is quite funny, is um, I have to speak about two players, Lince Stroh and Karl Miner. You probably already know this name, because they um, are some demonstrator in the North American guitars shop. And these two which are both fantastic players, have tried thousands of guitars. They have been demoing tons of videos for the shop. And it's fun to see that they have played some of the most high-end guitars. And they both have a Waterloo in their, in their personal arsenal. Um, why? Because it's a different voice, in fact. You know, you can, of course, enjoy uh, a more modern, with kind of OM modified, really modern kind of um, uh, luxury, but you can also love the really direct, uh, soulful tone of these old guitars. So that's all for speaking. I'm now go gonna play the guitars. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.